A little piece of ceramic, a zealous in Arab, it means polished stone, azulejru. A piece of slim thickness, square, or not, one size glazed, shiny, and waterproof. There are of them hand painted or printed, abstract or figurative, with drawings or patterns. There are of them combined in panels, in dozens, hundreds, or in thousands. There are of them white or colorful. There are of them blue. There are many blue, but there are many in yellow and several other colors. It is not true that azulejo comes from Azor, though it is true that it is in Azor that many azulejo speak of ancient tales. Here we are in 1415, from 59 galleys, 33 carracks, and 120 small ships, debark an army of 20,000 knights and soldiers on the West African shore. They are led by the infants Duarte, Pedro, and Enrique. On that day, there was little resistance by the Moors, and Suta falls swiftly. But it is not only weaponry and valor, the Azulejos also serve the Christian faith. In monasteries, convents, churches and chapels, in an age when most people cannot read, extensive panels become an illustrated Bible. But it is not only faith, they served the taste and flaunted the riches of a class. They decorated great palaces, halls, living rooms, salons and gardens, and covered vast kitchens. And in cities, they adorned and protected the facades of the bourgeoisie and the working people. At the academy, they taught. Mathematics was learned from them, astronomy and geography. Much afterwards, urbanism invited a new public morals expression. The Azulejos are indoors and outdoors and descended underground to dress metropolitan stations. Today, the Azulejo is so contemporary as the architecture it lines, and it evolves along the new ideas for shapes and function. It is still present in public and urban art, and it still provides support for the plastic arts in all the underground stations. Azulejos are everywhere throughout all of Portugal, but the Portuguese did not invent the Azulejo. In fact, we must go back a long time to find the first known manifestations of the Azulejos. We need to go back 4600 years to go to ancient Egypt, when Portugal was still far from existing. This is the 27th century before Christ. Imhotep, the royal architect, orders the construction of the pyramid, which will be the last address of the Jose king. The steppe pyramid, as it was later known, rises 62 meters above ground, but beneath it an ensemble of galleries and chambers are dug, and their walls decorated with sequences of colored ceramic panels. These panels are believed to evoke reed mats, an eternal version of the palace decoration which the pharaoh inhabited in life. Now, let us move forwards a little, about 2,000 years, to go to 575 before Christ, to the ancient Mesopotamia. Here, Nebuchadnezzar II commands the construction of what became one of the seven wonders of the world, the eighth gate of the city of Babylon, the Ishtar Gate. The monumental construction was completely covered in ceramic of strong and vibrant blue, in contrast to the absence and color of the other constructions. In the new year, the gaze of the dragons and aurochs decorated the portico, which gave passage to the processions where the statues of gods were led through, convoyed on foot by 120 ceramic lions. Finally, we reach not the Portugal which was yet to be, but the Iberian Peninsula. In 711, the Muslims crossed Gibraltar and practically took over the entire peninsula. The reconquest of the territory of what is Portugal today ends in 1249 with King Afonso III. For the almost 800 years they were there, the Moors left a notable legacy in agriculture, mathematics and art. And they also left, finally, the Azulejos. Curiously though, the Azulejos stayed in the neighboring kingdom until in 1498, King Manuel I travels to Spain. Fascinated by the amazing Azulejo artisanship, he decides to bring it to Portugal, placing orders to Spain destined to the construction campaigns of the National Central Palace. For half a century still, Portugal continues to depend on the import of Azulejos from Spain. The workshops and national production come about with the arrival of Flemish artisans on the second half of the 16th century. 
1755, the earthquake devastated Lisbon. Upon reconstruction, the usage of the azulejos is favoured to stone, but the painted panels, till then so popular, are no longer suitable. And here come into picture the pattern azulejos. Pattern azulejos are tiles which, either individually or in a group, after being repeated, form a pattern. They are easy to produce, identical pieces are used. They are easy to lay, a whole façade will sometimes only have one motif. From need, they quickly become fashionable. During the following decades, the azulejos will fill with colour and different patterns, the façades of a rebuilt Lisbon. And now we come to the point where geometry comes in. To talk about azulejos, we need isometry. Iso for equal and metry for measure. Equal measure. Translations, rotations and reflections. Translations first. I shall use a piece by Raoul Linou. I replicate it by using a translation. First, I will move it to the right using a horizontal vector. Then, vertically upwards. Right again, upwards and so on until completion of our panel. We have a cat, two butterflies, a grasshopper, frogs, a crab and more frogs, all unmistakable works of Rafael Burdal Pinheiro. Let us choose the frogs in the bog and try to create a centre motif with rotations. I will choose a vertex, it will be the centre of the group. This one. I replicate the first piece by rotating it 90 degrees anti-clockwise, the second by rotating it 180 degrees but in the opposite direction of the first, and finally the third one 90 degrees. The motifs marry each other perfectly around the edges, at the corners and at the centre of the composition. Now I will try to duplicate this group of four pieces, let's rotate, with this point to the right, with this one to the left, carrying on the process we have an azulejo freeze. Perfect! And now to reflections. Let us go to the National Palace of Sintra to see a rooster's foot. Two tiles only generate this pattern. Each one has two geometric figures which bring to mind the leg and paw of a rooster, hence the curious name. The two azulejos are symmetric, as if they were in front of a mirror. Let us imagine the yellow line like the mirror. The axial reflection makes each point of the first piece be reproduced on the opposite side at an equal distance. This vertex mirrors itself here at D distance, this one here at D1 distance, this one here, 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 until we have all the points of the original image. There we go! But these pieces are special and deserve a little more of our attention. Let us again take one piece only. I cut the piece in two using a vertical median and a diagonal line. I get two equal halves, one is the rotation of the other. And the centre of the tile is a point of reflection. Let us see. This vertex must project itself through the centre and mirror itself here at D distance. This one, also crossing through the centre, mirrors itself here at an equal distance. This one here, to here, here, here. And, as we saw earlier, we proceed until we complete the reflection. A piece full of tricks. Now a challenge. This is a motif from the Madre de Deus convent in Lisbon. The floral painting is quite dense, but if we look carefully, how many unalike azulejos are there? We have to break it down. At first sight, we immediately identify a group, this one. Now, if the group is 4x4, four four, then it contains 16 pieces. Is the panel comprised of 16 pieces? Um, no. I can still find another group, this one, with 4 pieces. That's the answer, 4. It's four unique pieces that generate the whole composition. I will start with the flower. I move it into the correct position. I also move the opposite corner. The two missing ones are reflections of each other. I move them to close the group. Now hinging on the flower, here, I close the group with three rotations. One, two, three. 
I proceed with a horizontal translation, a vertical one and another one. Four different pieces and three really simple operations. Let us roll up our sleeves. It is now the 17th century, we are in Santarain and we have work to do. We have hundreds of pieces at hand but of only one motif. We have been working with pieces laid orthogonally. In this project we are going to lay them at an angle of 45 degrees. We start by preparing the first panel, this wall. I rotate the first piece 45 degrees and slide it. A simple translation with an oblique vector. The second, the third, fourth. In fact, I rotate and slide the remaining 55 pieces. For completion, we must cut 12 pieces by their diagonal and, with these cuts, finish the work. I apply the three-piece frame and our work here is done. In the 60s, Eduardo Neri drew a very special azulejo. The single piece devises dozens of distinct patterns. But how? I take a blank piece. I will split an edge in half. I choose the left one and split that segment in three different parts. I transfer those measures and mirror them to the second half. Now, we just have to apply the same rule to the rest of the edges. Here, here and here. I proceed. I join the points from one side to the other, creating a diagonal mesh. I decide over the final pattern, intersecting the lines and erasing segments. And finally, I apply colour. Yellow on the widest one, dark blue on the next and pale blue on the narrowest. Same length strips have the same colour. We have drawn the piece. And now for the tricks. There's the geometric trick, dividing the four sides of the piece equally, which is what allows us to marry it in any position. There's the art and genius of the artist. Had the piece been drawn like this, with four axes of symmetry, it would work in any position. But it would not generate different patterns. But the piece is drawn in such a way that upon each rotation, a different image is formed. One, two, three, Four. This allows for a single piece to originate dozens of distinct patterns, like so, and so, so, and so, or yet, and many others. There we go, and all that with a simple azulejo. Don't you want to try? At gi2.pt, with the Con Simples Azulejo app, here.